Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with cstampfield.com. Make sure I got the microphone and everything all set. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, relax. We're going to create together and just uh, have a, a creative escape. How are you all doing? I hope you're well tonight. It's Tuesday, uh, May 16th, and we are going to make a card with some brand new products um, from the new Stampin' Up! catalog. And uh, shout out to my moderator hanging out in the comments, Jennifer Walsh. Um, if you have a question and you're watching on YouTube, you can uh, tag Jennifer by doing that Amber or the at symbol and uh, typing in Jennifer and her name will pop up in case I miss your comments. So, um, okay, well, we're going to create together. I just literally flew into the house a short while ago. I'm leaving on a trip this Friday and I spent the whole day running errands, getting ready. Do you know how that is? Like, oh my gosh, so many errands. So I am really looking forward to creating tonight. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. I wanted to let you know that I do send out free project sheets. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that at seastanfield.com. Click on subscribe, and then you will get free project sheets in your inbox to help inspire your creativity. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to flip the camera and let's look at what we're going to play with tonight. Oh, okay. That's boring. My desk, but we needed that. We needed that. That was step one, right? I'm going to go back over to comments here so I can see what's going on. Oh, thank you, Myrtle. I'm so glad you're loving the project sheets. I'm hoping I'll get another one out here before I leave on my trip. We'll see how that goes. Getting down to the wire right now. We are flying to uh, London on Friday for the Stampin' Up! incentive trip, which is a cruise to the fjords of Norway, which just sounds so exotic, right? And then we're going to come back to the UK after the cruise and spend a little bit of time there. And I'm super excited about that. So tonight we're going to create with this darling details bundle. Look how many dies, you guys. Oh my goodness. This, this baby is loaded with dies. Um, they're just, oh my goodness really cool. And so there are some really unique dies in this. And um, I did use some of them. Uh, our Crafternoon event was this past Saturday. Uh, for Crafternoon, every month I develop a unique fun fold card um, to share with um, the Crafternoon participants. And I do that in a public video and share it with everybody. And uh, then the people in the uh, that placed a qualifying order last month. They get a packet in the mail. Let's see, which one did they get? Oh, yes, they made this card. But our fun fold this month, I call the double decker. See, double decker pop out card. Because you can see how that lower deck pops out, pops up and out. Um, so that is the double decker pop out card. So it's just kind of a fun surprise inside the card. And this is the one that um, was the make and take. And I did a public video on this one. And then I did five, uh, four more alternate designs. Well, I guess five <laughs> that um, are made with the same fold. And those are all in a tutorial along with the tutorial for this one step by step a PDF tutorial that can be printed out so that you can reproduce all of the cards. The class participants participants get that tutorial for free, as do my team members. Um, but this one opens up like this. So there we have our fun pop out on the inside. So you can see they're a little bit different. This one you can, I made it so that you could see that inside layer when the card is closed. This one I did not. And that was because of these unique dies that are from the Starling Details uh, bundle. So I use the stamp sets from, from blah, blah. I use the stamp set from the bundle. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm super tired. I jogged this morning and then I, I was like shopping and running errands all day. So I will revitalize here as we create together, right? <laughs> So the Darling Details one is so stinking cute. Um, and inside this is called... Um, Oh boy, I'm gonna, my brain's gonna go foggy on me. It is eclectic. Um, what's that called? Oh boy. All right, I'm blanking out on that one. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It'll come to me when I cheat and look at it. 
delightfully eclectic. I think that, yes. Okay. Delightfully eclectic, which is a, a huge, look at all the fun. Oh my gosh. Look at that one. Oh, that is super cute. All right. I totally have to create with that one. Look how fun that is. Little uh, bubble bath uh, flowers in there. That is adorable. Oh my goodness. This just inspires my creativity to look at these fun and beautiful papers, right? Oh, and here it's beautiful daisy. So stinking cute. Uh, yeah, this is really fun paper. Look at the letters. You could cut out the different letters and spell something fun. Um, so this was the, the paper we used. We actually used this side, uh, but the stripe side is super cute too. But that's the paper I used for this card. So on this card, I used these two giant frames here. And again, the step-by-step -step for this one is in that tutorial. Um, but yeah, I know it's kind of a hidden, it's a hidden gem, Cindy. <laughs> and I got it because of those unique dies. And so I'm hoping tonight that you'll indulge me and together we can play with another unique die in the set, which is this one right along here. So for this, for this card, I use these two and these do not cut the outside edge. Um, it's a, it's a stitching. It does put a stitching detail, but you can see there's no, it just is the stitching that gets cut. It doesn't cut an outside edge. Um, it cuts the front edge. I don't know if you can see on the camera, the front edge is raised and the back edge is not. So you cut your paper to the size you want your frame to be, and then you die cut it to get that cute frame. And then the smaller one is exactly the same method. It doesn't cut that outside edge. It adds, adds the cute stitching. And this one even has little kind of tag corners on it. It's just super, super cute. But it gives you that eyelet look, which is so delicate and beautiful. Just love it. But tonight we're going to play with this die, which looks super, super fun. So... <gasps> Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank it. It, it is. Um, it's really fun to create uh, with these frames. Let's see what it's like to create with this. Now, you, if you watch my videos, you know I'm a big fan of a lot of white space. <laughs> I love me a lot of white space. But what's cool about this particular die? All right, I already lost something, friends. Let me know what's in your cup tonight. Um, I have a messy craft craft desk like. It's like perpetually messy. I cleaned it up for Craftanoon. It's already a total disaster again. And before the video, I cut this just to see what the heck it, what, what the heck we were working with. And can I find it now? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Susan, what are we going to do with me, you guys? What are we going to do with me? We can't take a drink till I find it. <laughs> oh, I found it. I found it. It was way the heck over here. Oh my goodness. All right. So this is how, um, this is what it looks like when you cut it out. Now, this is the same way. If you can see, what is the name of the die set? It is called Darling Details. The dies are now the same name as the stamp set they're bundled with, which makes it so much easier. So Angie, it's Darling Details that we're working with tonight. So this one, when you cut it, it's the same thing. Can you see? Uh, boy, I got to zoom up here. You see the top edge has the cutting blade. It's kind of a raised up um, part that cuts. So it cuts that fun scallop. At the bottom edge, there is no cutting blade. So this will be however wide your piece is. You get to decide um, how tall or how skinny or, or whatever, how you want that piece to be. So I cut it just to see what it would look like out of basic white here. And what's fun about this one is it, it, I mean, it's beautiful just as it is, right? I mean, let's grab our card back in here and I'm just going to flip it over. <laughs> I mean, it is beautiful just as it is because it's got that kind of ruffly edge, um, which is, you know, just a super cute element to add on a card. You could put like designer paper down here and then this could be a, a line and you can have a greeting up here. I'm just I'm just winging it here, coming up with ideas while we look at this. Um, but another uh, uh, feature of this die is these slots. These are ribbon slots. So if you choose, you can thread the ribbon through. Okay, you have a cup of tea. Oh, I forgot to take a sip. We, we had to found it. <laughs> mm. ah, I have ice water in my cup as per usual. So good. I did not drink enough water today and uh, I'm feeling it. All right, so 
we're going to cut this today and we're going to thread it with ribbon and that's how we're going to make our card. But I need you all to tell me what ribbon we're using. So we're going to experiment a little bit here. Um, so you want a ribbon that is pretty skinny. Oh, Susan, where's your... Oh, found it. Found it. It was under a bunch of stamps. Ha, what a surprise. <laughs> Seriously, it's a disaster in here. Okay, um, I'm just going to measure uh, how big these slots are when they're cut. Because I'm curious. Are you curious? Okay, I would call that uh, one. Eight, uh, it's a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. I would say it's not quite three eighths inch. So let's experiment. This is the Petal Pink Ribbon. Why is my camera being blurry? Okay, there, that should be better now. Um, this is the Petal Pink Ribbon from the Zoo Crew Suite. Um, you can purchase this two pack of ribbon. It's called a duo combo pack, I believe. You get these two um, together. And I don't know what width this is. I'm guessing quarter inch. Yeah, that's dead on quarter inch. So let's see if that would fit through because I want you, to, you all to tell me what ribbon we're going to go with for a card tonight. So I'm going to just thread that through. Yeah, so that one fits perfectly. The Lemon Lime Twist one would probably also fit, but it's a little skinny, and I'm not sure if that's the direction I want to go. So we're not going to, that's not one of our choices. It's going bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry. All right, it's going back on the shelf. But we do have some other choices. So what about this one? This one is Lost Lagoon, and it's a very um, textured ribbon. It's called a bordered ribbon. And wow, look, in this language, it's lint met board. I think that must be Norwegian, uh, um, um, not Norwegian. What's the, um, <laughs> the, the Netherlands? Uh, Dutch. It's Dutch. So we're going to take this, and we're going to thread that through and see what, oh, Oop, oop. I need a I need a fresh cut here. Hang on, bear with me. All right. This one um, is a, a very uh, textured, kind of like a linen look, I would say. And it does um, does fray a bit. So I just needed a fresh cut there. So that one works really well. That goes quite nicely. And I think this one is considered three eighths inches. Let's take a look. Let's cheat and look at the box. Oh no, this is a quarter inch. Okay, so far quarter inch ribbons are the winner for this. So we have uh, the petal pink, we have the Lost Lagoon, but we have another option here too. Well, we could do red. Um, this is from the red, uh, it's, it's a, another combo. It comes with red and with garden green. And that fits beautifully in there. But another choice I thought would be absolutely gorgeous would be this one, which is a vanilla with a gold um, gold um, thread through it. A couple gold threads, actually. And this one is a little bit wider. This one is 3 8 inches. So this one is, you know, it might bunch up. It might not work. Let's, let's figure it out see what we think oh yeah it's soft enough that it it does pull through just fine and it's um oh come on camera my camera is being a little bit naughty tonight it keeps focusing on the wrong thing so you can see it kind of folds in a little bit um but i think that one would work really well as as well okay goodness we have four choices all right so red Gold, we'll call this blue just to make things easier, <laughs> or pink. Let me know in the comments what you want our card to, uh, what ribbon we're using on our card. And I'm guessing if we just choose the gold, we'll probably go with very vanilla paper instead of the, um, the white. Otherwise, we're going to stick with white because... <gasps> Oh my goodness, I am seeing lots of votes for Lost Lagoon. Blue, 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 blue. I got a pink person. Woohoo! One gold. <laughs> but it looks like, uh, oh, pink or blue, Colleen says. Okay. All right. So um, 
I only see one for gold. So gold is going to go bye-bye, but I, I might have to create that card because I think that would be fun to, to give that a try. Uh, but it looks like Lost Lagoon is the winner. So I'm going to set these aside. And <laughs> my red ribbon is wanting to like just unroll and join the party here. So um, pardon me while I try to contain it so that it doesn't get in our way. The big tail of red ribbon. Uh, getting in our trailing in our ink pads, right? That would be not not cool. All right, so I've got those put aside. We've got our Lost Lagoon here. And Lost Lagoon is a color that just came back. Um, it was one we had quite a few years ago and um, it was retired. It was actually an in color, I believe. And now it is back in the permanent line. Woohoo! All right, so I'm going to grab a scrap from my desk here of... Uh, basic white ribbon and I'm going to cut that. Let's grab our paper trimmer here and this is the one I think that needs a new blade but we'll see. We'll see how we go. All right I can see little shards of paper in here which probably means it's needing a new blade. So I'm going to go to the five and a half inch mark and we're going to just cut that. So I've got the five and a half inch piece and this right now. Oh gosh, what? Okay, guys, where'd my ruler go? <laughs> and I shut my shirt in the trimmer. Oh my goodness. All right. This is going to be an adventure tonight. All right. This one is, it's one inch. And so we, we can decide how uh, big or small we want our border to be by this is the edge that cuts. This is the edge that it doesn't. So if we wanted it to be, close to one inch we would go all the way to the edge here and zoom in a little bit if we wanted it narrower we'd go almost all the way to this edge i hope that makes sense so all right oh look i had another one right here could use that one all right and then i'm going to grab some basic white i'm going to use thick tonight is patty is patty fortune watching she's i know she likes the thicker um thick basic white and thick vanilla the thick basic white it, it is a very it feels super elegant super elegant so i'd like posh you know like one of those fancy in, invites to a fancy wedding that's like that heavy duty paper that just feels super elegant i have too much stuff on my desk oh my goodness so what's new right all right so we're going to measure this at five and a half inches there we go. And while I'm in Norway, um, I will still have some videos. I've been uh, making some videos ahead for you. I don't want you guys to get uh, not have creative inspiration while I'm away. So I'm not sure if I'll I'll have enough to cover every every uh, uh, normal video thing, but we'll be close. <laughs> All right. So I've got this scored. Um, this is just uh, five and a half by eight and a half and I scored it four and a quarter and that's going to be our card base and again this is the thick card, um, card stock so let's see can I find a bone folder well it's not where it belongs up oh, found it it's under a stamp okay take a sip everyone that is number three hmm. thank you for dropping those uh page numbers and and uh item numbers in the comments Jennifer we appreciate you so much all right, so we've got our card going here, and now let's get our, let's grab our mini machine. It happens to be right at hand here, so let's do that. And we're going to go ahead and die cut. Oh, found it. <laughs> I set it down, and oh my goodness, you guys. All right, take another sip. That's number four. We're, we're not going for a record again tonight, Jennifer. I told Jennifer before we started that I was tired, but that I've been running all day. So I guess I didn't say I was tired, but she probably inferred it from that. All right. So I've got my mini machine here. I've got plate number one. I'll turn around so you can see the number. Not that that matters. And then a uh, um, number two plate. And I've got my die here. And we're going to make this kind of skinny. We'll push it back. We'll go with, oh, I don't know. We'll go with that now you can see it's bouncing around and i don't want it to cut crooked so i'm going to secure it with a post-it note just as soon as i can find what i did with them oh my goodness all right they're not where they belong 
So there's that. That ah, found them. They were under a stack of dimensionals. Why is there a stack of dimensionals on my desk? Well, I don't know. <laughs> there just is. Oh, okay, take a sip, everyone. Mm, what is that? What are we up to? 45? No, no, no. Wait, I don't know. I've lost track already. All right, so I'm going to just secure this border die uh, because that's what it is. It's making a border with my post-it note. It is pretty long, so if you want to throw a second one on there, you sure could. I'm going to live dangerously and just do one. And I have about, oh, I don't know, what is that, about an eighth of an inch there? All right, so I get, um, my machine can grab the plates easier if I slide that center plate back about a half inch or more. It's more like three quarters inch. doesn't matter. It just makes it a little easier for those that roller to grab the plates and get cranking. So if you ever have trouble with uh, feeding your things through your mini machine, give that a try. All right, let's see how we did. I'm going to pull this aside. Oh, that's so cute. There it is. You know what it also would make? It would make a cute little fence. You know how the fancy gardens have those decorative little fences or border fences? So super cute. It does, however, look crooked to me. I think it moved on me. Dang. All right. Hang on. Hold the phone. Um, I'm going to cheat and switch to the other one that I already cut, but I've already <laughs> I've lost it up, found it. It was under the stamp set. All right, we're going to switch to this one because do you see what happened? It's, um, I should have put two post-it notes on it. It uh, went a little wide at the end. Not terrible. You could probably still get away with it, but it's a little bit off. So I'm going to, I'll put that in mom's bin. Mom likes my scraps and she turns them into cards. So I'm going to keep the uh, mini machine at the ready because we are going to need it again. But let's get our, let's get our Lost Lagoon here and thread this through and see how that's going to work. So I'm going to start at, we can do this two ways, right? You can have the, the ribbon lump be up here. Why are we not focusing tonight? Goodness. Um, the ribbon lump could be right here between the two slots, or you could have it be over here. I want it between the two slots. Um, and then it's, this um, die cut almost looks like a flower. So uh, am I at number six, Carol Thompson? Oh my goodness. Thank you. The, thanks for keeping, <laughs> keeping score at home, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to pull my ribbon through. Now I, I'm already fraying it a bit. Probably would be with, with a ribbon like this, that's kind of a linen type of ribbon probably would be a good idea to maybe put a little piece of scotch tape or something um, there. So, all right. So how do I need to do this? Like, do I need to pull it all the way through first? I kind of feel like I do. All right. Let's look and see if we think that'll be enough. I'm going to give myself a little more leash. All right, what is that? That's about, okay, that's about twice as much ribbon as the piece. Let's see how we go with that so that when you recreate this card, you'll know and you won't have to do the guesswork, all right? Because we're going to figure it out together, right? All right, so I'm going to pull this through. Again, a little piece of tape, but look how fun that is. Oh, it's so cute. And then it, it turns this piece back here, um, uh, Lost Lagoon. So pretty fun. All right. I need to trim this. It's already getting fuzzy on me. Oh, found them. I put them away. Okay. Number seven, take a sip, everyone. I hope nobody's got wine in their <laughs> wine in their glass tonight. Oh boy. All right. Do you think I'll even it up by, if I measured the slits, Janine, you're probably right. I probably don't need double. But gosh, I don't want to run out when I'm on a video. That would be embarrassing. So we'll figure out. We know we started with double. We'll see what we end up with. Oh, now I've twisted that one. Let's see if I can, if I need to pull it out. Oh no, I can just twist it right in the thing. Did you see I had it twisted? So I just twisted it back. This reminds me, you know, when you were a kid, did you ever those, those, um, those creations where you had yarn 
that had like the end on it like a shoelace and you would thread it through uh, paper that had their cardstock that had the uh, punches <laughs> holes punched in it and you would make am I just making this up that existed right I, I think that was a real thing and then you would create pictures right that's what it reminds me of or sewing with a really really wide thread <laughs> So I tried to not twist it again. Not that that wasn't an easy fix. So um, now you could maybe use, um, like when I've threaded linen thread and baker's twine, I've used um, those dental floss threaders that you can just pick up at Target. Okay, I've twisted that one. You see how it's twisted at the back? I'm just going to take this and twist it and fix it. Okay, super easy to fix. Okay, I'm getting a hot flash. We might have to lose something just so I can get another, take another sip. Oh, dear. All right, so threading it through. It's so pretty. You guys did good. You picked a good color. I like it. I was, uh, I wasn't thinking where we, I was thinking where we were going to do pink tonight or gold. That was what I guessed you guys would pick. And you always surprise me. So that's what makes it fun for me and hopefully for you that we actually are creating together and I end up with something that's totally different than what I anticipated. I'm too lazy to pull the tape out of my drawer. So we're just going to keep trimming off the fuzzies as they happen. Now you wouldn't get this fraying on the pink ribbon or the gold ribbon. Um, this one again is, it, it is very much like a linen and I, I was doing a lot of shopping today. Oh my goodness. Was I doing a lot of shopping? because I needed some clothes because there's been a lot of eating <laughs> going on here and nothing fits. So I needed new clothes. Um, and linen is very in right now. I, every single store I was in, um, I saw linen pants and linen blazers. And, you know, I know it's a time of year with summer, but, um, but natural fabrics are very, very in right now. So we are on trend here with our card. In case you're, one, in case you're worried that your card would not be, you know, fashionable it's going to be perfectly on trend so all right there we go and then we'll just do one little squinty here at the end see what that looks like so cute all right probably could use your take your pick tool to kind of poke it through as well so there we have our piece now i'm just gonna to finish it i'm just gonna wrap this one around and this is where I really wish I had some tape. That's okay. We'll tack it down with something sticky. And then I think I'll do the same with this because I don't really want those ends poking out or whatever. I want them tucked in so they're nice and neat. So we're gonna just flip that back and let's secure it with, hmm, what do we have at hand? How about a dimensional? Sure, why not? They're even where they belong. I didn't even lose them. It's a miracle. All right. So I'm just going to put one right there on the end of that. And I'm going to fold this guy back and tack him down as well. There we go. And then we're going to add a few others because, you know, we can. True, Janine, linen can wrinkle. That is one of the drawbacks. That's where your, your portable steamer comes in really handy, right? <clears throat> but I didn't buy any for the trip for exactly that reason, because plus we're going to Norway, so I don't think it's going to be super summery. <laughs> it's spring there, uh, but I think it's still going to be a bit on the chilly side. So there we have our, oh, so pretty. All right, let's see what we can do here. So I got a couple ideas. Um, so we're going to pop this right on our card here. Now, it actually, I was afraid that edge would sort of disappear being white on white. But because it's popped up with the dimensionals now, you get a nice shadow effect and, and it is it is visible. However, if you felt it was too, if you wanted it to show, show even more, you could grab, hold on, I'm way over here. Bear with me. Get some cardstock for us. 
you could grab some Lost Lagoon cardstock and you could actually trim a piece. So let's take our Lost Lagoon cardstock here and let's cut it at five and a half. And about, well, what do we end up here with? What would you guess? That's three quarters of an inch, isn't it? So you could cut a piece that was one inch, uh, one inch wide to go under that border. Let's see what that looks like. All right. So we've got this border piece right here. And then that could go on there. So do you see how that um, it gives you? It's not blue. It's more green. <laughs> it is kind of a blue green, I would say. Um, let's take a look at that. So this is Lost Lagoon. And where it falls in the Stampin' Up! Rainbow is between Pretty Peacock, which is right here. Actually... Let's grab our rainbow. We're talking rainbow. Let's just grab our rainbow right here. All right. Now, if you subscribe to my uh, free project sheets, you got this um, the this chart to print off uh, in an, in one, one of my project sheet emails. If you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, it's on the website. You can print this off. So here's Lost Lagoon. I'm going to flip it around here. Here, Lost Lagoon is between Pretty Peacock and Coastal Cabana. So it is... Um, it is right next to the greens as we transition into the blues. Does that make sense? So it is a, definitely a blue green. You are spot on. All right. So let's, sorry, got this, got distracted with my fun little toy. <laughs> so I need you to vote in the comments if you want the, um, to do white on white or if you want the border. So let me know your thoughts there. And while you're doing that, we're going to, I'm going to die cut some flowers. Yeah. So to do that, I need to trim my paper down a little bit. We're making a monochromatic card. Uh, monochromatic just means uh, usually it's a neutral paired with one color. I do navy and white a ton. Um, this time we're going to do Lost Lagoon and white. And uh, monochromatic cards uh, can be very striking. It might sound a little boring, but um, it is it is not. It's a very, um, very attractive look. And so if you're struggling with matching up colors, just go with one. <laughs> one color and a neutral. Easy peasy. So looks like y'all are voting. Um, Looks like most of you want the border. All right, great. I'm gonna bring in our our little mini machine again here, and we've got our cutting plate, and we're gonna die cut this. Let's see. Oh, what should we do? Oh, so many choices. Um, I'm gonna do this one right here, which is the flowers. Now, the, the beauty of stamping is that you don't have to follow the rules of nature. We can have a uh, a flower and leaf that are all the same color. They could be hot pink if we wanted. That's the beauty of stamping. Don't have a lot of pink leaves in nature. Well, maybe coleus, but um, that's okay. We can go with whatever looks good because this is art. <laughs> and that's how it works. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. And let's see, let's see if we like it or not. All right. Clean out the little bits and pieces. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, this is a pretty color. You guys picked a good one. I can always count on you guys. All right, we're going to do our, our border discussion again here. So I'm going to, we will be tucking the flower probably under, actually might go under the this border here. No, it might not. Hang on, hang on. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it could right there. So that's what it looks like with the border behind. Let's just make sure that's what we want to do. And here's what it looks like without the border. You didn't see the whole picture before. So let me know again, even if you already voted, border, no border. And while you're voting, I'm going to grab my Lost Lagoon ink pad. <clears throat> I'm also going to take a drink because I'm losing my voice. I haven't lost anything, but
Ooh, that's a good question. Somebody asked what definitely border. Okay. Somebody asked what would, oh, Mary asked what, what would pretty peacock look like behind it? That would look really pretty. Let's see. Um, where is my <gasps> lost lagoon? Found it, found it, found it right where it belongs in my rainbow order. So Mary asked, <laughs> Mary asked about pretty peacock and I would be happy to show that to you if I could find what I did with it. Seriously, I didn't put it away. Where the heck did I put it, you guys? Ah, okay. I'm just going to grab another sheet. Kind of cheating, but found it. Mm, that would look nice, but I think I want to go all monochromatic on this card. So um, that would be an option, though, to do like a two-tone thing like that. So looks like most of you say border. Oh, Karen's is embossed the card front. Mm, Karen, you're, you're my people. I love me some embossing. All right. So here is our border. That is what the majority voted for. So we will, we, I will comply. <laughs> All right. So I feel like this is a little bit wider than I want. So I'm going to cut this down just a skosh. So uh, this is three fourths inch. This was one inch and that's a little thicker than I want. So what would be seven eighths, right? Let's try seven eighths. We just want a hint of a border. I want loads of white space. All right. Oh, hey, I cut that one straight. <clears throat> that's not always been the case tonight, has it? All right. Good to know that I can still do something straight. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's just a little bit of a skinnier border. And I think before I stick anything down, I might want to do my stamping. So let's look at the stamp set. Oh, look, friends, there is a super duper cute happy birthday. I think we need to use that. Uh, what are the odds it's in the stamp set where it belongs? And what are the odds that it's laying on my desk? <laughs> Let's, fingers crossed. <gasps> it is in the stamp set. Oh, found it. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cheating, but I need another sip because I'm thirsty tonight. Mm. That is so good. What am, why am I getting the feeling that this card is going to have some more butterflies on it? Because I really like the butterflies on this card. Aren't they fun? I was going to do it in one of our previous our, our, uh, videos recently, and I, I couldn't find them. I found them, though. They were downstairs. That's why I couldn't find them. So it's not like they were just lost. They were like the other part of the house. All right. So I love birthday cards because I always need birthday cards, right? So I'm going to grab my stamp and cushion. The reason I'm grabbing the cushion is that this is a clear stamp set photopolymer stamp set and uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stick this down because I feel like I'm not going to know where to stamp unless I stick this down. All right that was not my best adhesive application because I got oh goodness all right it's all good it's all good right we're going to get there. So I'm using my grid paper here to help me just uh Get this on straight. All right, so there we've got our border piece there, and now I can better eyeball where I want to do my happy birthday. So let's just envision that this guy is right there. And I'm going to put my happy birthday. I'm going to put it quite high up, actually. Splitting the difference between the top of the car. Oh my gosh, that was super crooked. <gasps> Susan. Oh well. It's all right. It's all it's 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 a one of a kind handmade item, right? Totally it's fine. All right. <laughs> Maybe I can just de just detract from that by putting a bunch of butterflies flying around it. Okay, we're gonna take our um, multi-purpose liquid glue. Put a little glue on here. Just going to add some dots. You can do a thin line. There's actually enough room in the center of both flowers to add a glue dot. So why don't I do that? Or you could just use the liquid glue, whatever. And I, and I think it would be enough to hold it down if you just did, if you just glue dotted it in the center of those flowers. I think that would be sufficient, but let's try it here. Pick tool at the ready. And 
stick that on. Let's get one more right here. All right. My perfectionist heart is not happy with my crooked sentiment. So how could I fix that without ripping the whole card apart? Any ideas in the comments? You guys are really good at fixing things giving me ideas. I got a little bit of a glue dot shove, shove that back there. So there we've got our little flower thing and we're going to <laughs> 11 is the current record of found it. So, okay. Well, I'm not done yet, Jennifer, but uh, can I lose anything else in this time? Maybe not. Let's hope not. All right. So we're going to pop our border on there. Very simple card. But that ribbon border, I think, really gives it that fun factor, right? And for those of you that are not fans of tying bows, yeah, there were no bows tied in this <laughs> in this ribbon uh, endeavor. So, all right, I'm going to line up the, the left edge first with the end of the card and just kind of thread it right across. It's very uh, flexible and bendy now because of having that um, ribbon in there. So there we have our card. So I don't like my crooked greeting. So my fix for that is uh, going to use the, yep, you guys got it, a label, cover it up. Yep. <laughs> right? It's like you, like maybe, has this happened to any of you before? This is like sounding like maybe, you know, uh, if you, you're, I'm not alone. Maybe I'm not alone. All right, let's grab a piece of basic white cardstock. Let's see, it'll be perfectly straight now, of course, now that I don't need it straight because I could have fixed that later. <sighs> oh, things are falling. How about that? All right, so we've got our happy birthday here. Um, could punch it out. Let's see if it would fit in. Look at that. It would fit perfectly in the oval punch. In fact, if we wanted to, we could do the other oval behind it. We may not like it, but you know what? Let's try it in white. Or we could try it in Lost Lagoon. And if we don't like it, we'll die cut something else, right? All right, let's bring our card back in here and see. Now we could just put it right there up on a dimensional. Just totally covers that boo-boo, right? You guys are so smart. Or we could put the white layer behind it, pop that whole business up right there. Or we could put Lost Lagoon behind it pop that whole business right up there. All right, so I need your, your advice. Uh, what color back do we want? Char is voting for Lost Lagoon back. So we're going to call this blue for lack of a better term. So blue back, white back, or no back? Blue, white, or no? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And while you are doing that, I'm going to stamp an inside message. I'm going to stamp this message right here that says... Count me among all the people who are here for you. It's a nice sentiment, right? It's a nice thing to send someone on their birthday. I'm here for you, no matter what. All right, so let's see if Susan can stamp straight tonight. Stacy. I'm um, seeing a lot of people voting for the Lost Lagoon as the back. So it looks like that is the winner. All right, Susan, I have to, I have to, you know, like pump, I have to talk to myself here, kind of pump myself up for straight stamping. Can I do it? Oh, All right. Yay, straight enough. All right, let's go back to the front of our card. Let's fix our boo-boo, friends. That's half of the fun in stamping, right? Figure out a creative way to fix your mistakes because I guarantee you there is no such thing as perfect art, right? It wouldn't be art if it was perfect. All right. So we've got our, and, and we're going to end up with a cuter card because of that boo-boo, right? We're going to like it even better. 
I'm going to put aside these plates because they are in my way. All right, I'm going to grab a couple more dimensionals. I don't, is there a such a thing as too many dimensionals? I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. All right, I'm going to go to our card here. And we're going to just fix our boo-boo right there. All right, now I think we need a little bling. I know some of you are going to say we don't, but those flower centers to me seem like they're saying, embellish me, embellish me. Perhaps I, that may not be true, but <laughs> I'm pretending that's what they're saying. All right, I have opened up my embellishment drawer. Oh, we, you know, we talked about actually, actually, hang on, hold the phone. <gasps> we talked about butterflies and not doing flower medals, although we could certainly do both. I would not be opposed to that. I'm just frankly digging here because I thought I had. Ah, goodness. I'm so good at losing things. Like, if that was a major in college, that would be, that would be for me. Oh, found them. All right. So we have these. Those are pretty peacock, though. Those would not look good. I don't think those would work. And that's too green. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. This one. Oh, here, this one might work. That looks more Lost Lagoony. So that would be a possibility. All right, let's uh, let's give it a whirl. Could do the white middle though, the white sequin. That would be an option. Silver pearls or silver gem. White pearls or silver gems. Lila says. There's a helicopter outside. This is the Tinsel Gems three pack. Jennifer, maybe, would you be able to look up what color these are, are in these? Um, I'm not sure where these are in the catalog. I'm guessing this is Lost Lagoon, though. But these um, tinsel gem things are kind of uh, uh, translucent. So they sort of pick up the, they, they go with multiple colors because they kind of pick up the color of the cardstock. It sort of shows through. Um, but that looks quite nice, I think. Let's try another one here. This looks like maybe Fresh Freesia, and that looks like maybe Misty Moonlight, maybe. Although it could actually be, yeah, I think that, that gem looks nice. And let's put a little butterfly on there, too. Or is that going to mess up our, our uh, monochromatic? All right, you guys let me know, yes or no, on the butterfly, if you'd like adding a butterfly or not. It is taking a departure from our whole monochromatic look. So um, I'm going to see what this would look like with a little one here. Just for fun. Let's grab a little one. Put that on this flower because it is a little bit littler. Yeah, I like that better. A big one and a little one. So no butterfly yet. No, no. It looks like uh, the butterfly is, is it's a... Uh, a hot topic. There's some, there's yay and nays, but mostly I see nays. So we're going to take the butterfly off and we're going to go strictly monochromatic here on our card. Let's set these aside here. <gasps> Let's see how we did. So uh, normally I put the dimensions up on the screen, but our dimensions were pretty minimal tonight. <laughs> Where we had a standard card base and then we had this strip which started out as a one inch and we cut it down to three fourths inches by five and a half. And then the piece behind was seven eighths by five and a half. So pretty minimal cutting on this one. All right. I just have to hold on, hold on, hold the phone. Just a moment. I just want to see, can we see what this would look like? I'm asking you like, you're going to say no, because you know, you're not here <laughs> and I can pretend I don't hear you. So <laughs> I just want to see what the white would look like, just for fun. These are so, um, they're almost like holographic or something. Oh my gosh, you guys, I like that. Oh, I think I like that better. Okay, this would definitely be an option, but I didn't go with that option, did I? And I put the big one and the little spot and the little one in the big spot. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Um, let's grab a little one here. So these are yeah, kind of like hologram kind of sequins. 
All right, what is this called? This is called the Adhesive Backed Sequins Trio. And I'm, I'm sure that that is um, pretty peacock. I think this is supposed to be berry burst, but it's it's a pink that would go with many, many things. Um, and then the white one goes also with many things. But when I put the white ones on here, they kind of, they kind of turned blue. They turned Lost Lagoon almost, right? <laughs> they just picked up that color behind. So the nice thing about sequins is they are lower profile. Um, you can see it's lower than our our uh, lumpy ribbon border here. So um, so that's going to make a nice flat card for mailing. So there we have our super simple card with the darling details. And then let's again look at our other card that I made for Crafter Noon with the Darling Details, and that is this one right here. So these are the, the Darling Detail stamps, which we didn't really use tonight other than the greetings, and this one does have the butterfly on it. Um, so super fun dies in this set. Just think of how many great birthday cards you could make with these creative dies, and this flower one is super fun too. So um, let's go ahead and flip the camera here. Um, oh, while I've got it down, I can show you really quickly the other. This is called the Double Decker pop-out card, and that was from Crafter Noon. I have a blog post up on this that has uh, details on the tutorial. If you want to make all... <laughs> Come here. <laughs> that dimensional paper did not want to go anywhere, did it? Um, <laughs> if you want information on how to make all five of these cards... We had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun creating these cards. What another fun birthday card there in Tahitian Tide. And then we have the little zoo uh, crew cuties here. I just love this little turtle and how he's singing happy birthday. And then I had to do the raccoon too because it's just too stinking cute. So those are our double decker pop out cards. One more. Of course, it's grad season here in Minnesota. I'm sure it is where you are too. And so we had to do this uh, little grab cap on the balloon. So those are the Crafternoon Double Decker pop-out cards. And Double Decker seems really appropriate because I'm going to be in England and I'll probably, maybe I'll have to ride on a Double Decker bus. <laughs> Take a picture holding a double-decker card. That would be super cool. All right. Thank you, friends, for joining me tonight. I'm going to flip the camera so I can say goodbye. And I'll give you a little reminder here. Um, if you are not currently subscribed to my free project sheets, you may want to do that so you can get some creative inspiration right in your inbox. When you subscribe, you're going to get um, a couple uh, uh, project sheets right off the bat. So as a welcome with a welcome letter. And that's it, friends. Take care. Have a great night. And I will see you a Saturday night, 730 um, Central. I will actually be in London then. Uh, but I will have a video for you. And Jennifer will be here hanging out with us as well. So take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.